Welcome back to the Gift Beats Vegas podcast. I want to talk about the Deshaun Watson suspension. The league gave him six games today. And I'm on record when all this news broke on saying that I don't believe that he should get in trouble for any of this. And this is just a situation with the NFL where they have their big wigs, the people in charge of everything, and there's no checks and balances. They're given information. They look at the public outcry and they pass the sentence. And that's really what it is. They don't have any facts against Deshaun Watson that he did anything. This is all hearsay by his accusers. And in my opinion, it's one of those situations where they're just looking for a payday. It, just look at the timeline. This all came out after he got that big contract. And then people say, well, if there's 23 accusers. Well, they can't all be lying. Well, yeah, they can. I mean, wouldn't you line up and say, well, I gave him a massage. I gave him a massage. I gave... So they're just trying to get money because they're all in that. It's just like when people, when it comes on the TV, like, hey, this product causes cancer. If you developed it down the line, call this number. You're telling me that there's not people that have lied about that and they call up and then, you know, they get a payday. That's what this is, in my opinion. And I don't agree with it by the NFL. I think that there needs to be a little bit more respect when looking at things like this because it pretty much makes Deshaun Watson look guilty, tarnishes his name. But in all reality, what did he really do? He got excited on a massage table when a hot girl's giving him a massage. And honestly, he's just being human. He's just exerting his confidence. It's not like he did anything that bad. He didn't punch the women. He didn't grab them and hold them down and rape them. None of that occurred. All he did was get excited on a massage table, maybe made some gestures, maybe lightly touched the hand of the masseuse and pulled it towards something. I mean, maybe something like that happened. But honest, at the end of the day, a lot of women would have liked that, a star athlete doing that. I mean, he's just, again, he's just being human and he's being cut down, made to look like he's some weirdo when, I mean, guys, we're human, but we're also animals, okay? I am i don't condone rape, but that's the whole thing. There wasn't anything with rape here. Maybe a little bit, the women were a little bit uncomfortable, but I guarantee you right now, while they're sitting in their homes at this very moment, I would bet my life on it that they're smiling. They're having fun. They're enjoying the money that they're getting from this lawsuit. And they're also enjoying the attention that comes along with it in this celebrity driven country where everybody thinks they're a celebrity. That's what's going on right now. These women are having a great time. They're enjoying the attention and the extra phone calls that they're getting. And I, again, I would bet my life that none of these accusers are at home crying right now or damaged by any of this. If anything, this made their lives better. So again, guys, just look at the timing of it. He gets paid, then all this comes out. It's just like, come on, how much do you really want me to believe? And again, I really think the NFL is doing this because of the public outcry. If you go on Twitter, people are like enraged that he didn't get a full year or more. My God, some people wanted him out of the league forever, but there you go. With no evidence, hearsay, after his huge, gigantic contract, the NFL is going to let this slide like this and just appeal to the masses because they're going to be worried about the image of the NFL. And that's really what it comes down to. Also, it doesn't matter what you did in terms of like, even in a situation like this, if the NFL feels like you defaced them, if you made them look bad and you really made them look bad, then you're going to be in a lot of trouble. It's kind of funny. Like, cause some people, some players before there's some things that they've done where they've you know, done a lot worse than this or, Maybe they've done something that deserved a pretty big suspension, but because it didn't grab headlines, because it didn't you know, make the national news and they kind of either were on a bad team or they just weren't that dominant of a player, kind of flies under the radar. They don't get punished at all. And it, that's to me, that's a big problem. I think the NFL has to really be a part of a legal court in some kind of way and kind of have an association with that. So it's not just the NFL being a dictatorship coming out with whatever they feel is right without any kind of legal checks and balances. Cause in a court of law and Deshaun Watson's not in jail, therefore he shouldn't get in trouble. He shouldn't get a suspension. 
he wasn't found guilty of anything and there was no proof so the last thing i want to talk about with this is people comparing other situations to this suspension saying well if this guy got this then how come this happened well let's start with calvin ridley because that's one of the big ones that's one of the things that's getting all the twitter bitters and their panties in a bunch calvin ridley gambled on an nfl game albeit fifteen hundred dollars albeit as far as we know one time but honestly he could have been gambling a lot more and he could be gambling through a friend even and maybe no proof of that but for me i take gambling seriously and there's actually proof that he did it now was it a lot of money again no it wasn't it really at the end of the day it's not harming anybody but that hurts the integrity of the game and i have a big problem with that i have no problem with people gambling that are outside of sports and have nothing to do with the outcomes on sunday but if you're playing in the nfl even if you're not actually on the field like even if you're just if you're hurt injured or you're on a team you still have inside information you still have influence and i don't feel like anybody that's playing in the any kind of professional sport should be able to gamble on that sport I firmly believe that because you don't know how far it could get taken. And I don't want to see the game tainted any more than it already is. I don't want to see the integrity of a game I watch on Sunday be ruined because of bets being placed. Is it happening? Is Are the refs doing it? Probably. But you know what? At least we don't know about it and we can kind of carry on here. But Calvin Ridley made a stupid decision to do it. All he had to do was place a bet through a friend have a friend bet for him. It's not like he's got to do this, but maybe he wanted off the Falcons for the next two years. Ever think about that? Uh, It's very possible. I wouldn't want to waste my career and my body playing for that team right now. They suck. So there's there's a lot of different things to look at it with this. So people who just blindly say, well, Kelvin Ridley got a full year and Watson was so bad. He was so nasty. No, it's, you got to look at it from like realistic realism here. Calvin Ridley hurt the integrity of the game by gambling on it. That's a problem for me. Alvin Kamara, that's another one. Well, again, there's a situation where there's actually proof of him hitting somebody in the face eight times. And assault charges are very serious in any profession. Like if you want to go get a job at a bank, a company, wherever, if you have an assault charge on your record, there's a really good chance they're not going to hire you because you lost your cool. And if you lose your cool like that, they're thinking, well, you're going to come into my place of work. And if somebody accidentally spills coffee on you, you're going to punch them in the face eight times. You see, that's a big problem. And there's no room in that for me. If it's in self-defense, that's one thing. I'm all for it, It, which in that case, go as far as you need to go to defend your own life. But when you like if you're just mad at somebody over like a woman or some kind of bullshit spat and you assault them like that, that's not cool. That's a big problem for me. That's, you know, that's reckless. That's an issue. So that's why Kamara deserves to maybe even get suspended for more games. I don't like it. I mean, he's a great player, and I want to see him play for the Saints this year and see what that team can do. But, again, it's totally different when you're comparing it to the Deshaun Watson situation. Kamara physically beat the hell out of somebody. Deshaun Watson just came on too strong to some women. So that's my take on all this, guys. I do not believe that Deshaun Watson should have been suspended. And six games, you know what? The Browns can still salvage this. They can still go forward here, and maybe they can go three and three. Watson comes back, takes them the rest of the way. And at least Watson looks like he's kept up his game, too. I watched some of the practice film, and, you know, you kind of get worried about a player that's been out of football for this amount of time, but it's looking pretty good. So with that, guys, make sure to hit the like button, share the videos, and subscribe.